Welcome friends, in this one I'm going to show you three examples of solving equations that are reducible to quadratics. Take a look at this one. y to the fourth minus 5y squared plus 6 equals 0. First stage in the process is we write the y to the fourth as y, as y squared this way, so y squared, and then you square this quantity. That's allowed because 2 times 2 is 4, but you need to write it this way so you can use variable substitution. Now I get it, some people can factor this without having go, to go through the intermediate step, that's fine too. Not everybody can though, keep that in mind. So minus uh, 5 times y squared plus the 6 is equal to 0. Now what we do often is we set u or p or z, it doesn't matter, just some letter, set it equal to y squared or p or z again, makes no difference what letter you use here. So then the equation becomes u squared minus 5u plus 6 is equal to 0. Now I just factored this, so two numbers that multiply to 6, the same two numbers have to add up to the negative 5. So you have u minus 3 and then u minus 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. They check. Set each factor to 0, so u minus 3 is a factor, so u minus 3 is equal to 0, or u minus 2 is equal to 0. Add 3, so u is equal to 3. Add 2, so u is equal to 2. Now remember, u is y squared by definition initially. So you got to now take that step back. So in other words, look careful. You're going to get replace u with y squared. So y squared is equal to 3. You got to now solve for y because this is y squared. This is not y. So to do that, just take square roots. So square root of y squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. On the left side, as always, because they're opposites, I'm sure you know, uh, this will cancel with this, and all you have left is y, so y is equal to a positive root 3, or y is equal to a negative root 3. So there are two solutions for y already. This is using u equals 3, but now I'll take this u equals 2 also here. So let me do that on the side. So I'm going to use u equals 2. Remember u is y squared, so y squared is equal to u, 2. Take the square root on both sides. So the square root of y squared again, this time is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. On the left side again, these are going to cancel, so this will cancel with this, and that means all you have left is y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2, but this corresponds to two different values, so y is positive root 2, or y is negative root 2. So if you think about it, if you count all of these up, then you have in fact two solutions from here, two more solutions from here, so altogether we have four different values of y, that solved this original equation. So if you plug in positive root 3, negative root 3, positive root 2, negative root 2, if you plug any of these into the original equation, you will see that the left side will come out to be 0 equal to the right side. That's what it means. Four different values. Let's move on to the next example. So this one says y to the fourth minus 37y squared plus 36 equals 0. It's pretty much in the same mold as the other one, just that the numbers are bigger. So let's just do it for practice ones. Take a look. So again, write the y squared to the second here. We're writing the 4 as 2 times 2 minus 37. So 37 and then times y squared plus 36 is equal to 0. Set, for example, p to y squared or u or z. It doesn't matter. So now you have p squared minus 37p plus 36 is equal to 0. Factor this equation. So two numbers that multiply to 36, same two numbers add up to negative 37. Maybe you can guess them, but let's see. If I do p minus 36 and if I do p minus 1, negative 36 times negative 1 is positive 36, and then negative 36 plus negative 1 is negative 37. So those work, you see? All right, I set this equal to 0 the whole time. So now either p minus 36 is equal to 0 as a possibility or p minus 1 is equal to 0 as a possibility. Then p is equal to 36, add 36. But remember, p by definition is y squared, so you got to replace p back with y squared. So y squared is equal to 36. And then you take square roots on both sides. So plus or minus the square root of 36 on that side. On the left side, these will cancel off. So let's see, this cancels with this. And all you have left there then is y is equal to either positive 6 or y is equal to negative 6. Now look at p minus 1 equals 0. So that means p is equal to 1. You add 1 to both sides. But again, p is equal to y squared also. So we have y squared is equal to 1. Take square roots. So square root of y squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1. 
again on the left side these are opposites so this root and the two cancel off that means y is equal to plus one or y is equal to negative one the square root of one is one but then you take the plus and the minus so the big idea here as before is that there are four solutions positive six negative six positive one negative one if you plug any of these values into the left hand side right here and you work through it very carefully you will see that the left hand side comes out to be equal to the right hand side which is zero let's look at the last example here so this one says x squared minus 11 squared minus 10 times x squared minus 11 equals negative 25. This is a little bit different one. Well, first of all, we want to make it into a quadratic equation. So this negative 25 has to be moved through addition to the left side. So first stage is to have x squared minus 11 squared minus 10 times x squared minus 11 plus 25 is equal to 0. I've just taken this to the left side through addition. Now we have this x squared minus 11. There you go, in both of these terms, that looks pretty scary. So do this again, set u equal to x squared minus 11. So now the equation can be written as follows. Instead of writing x squared minus 11 squared, you can just say u squared minus 10 times u plus 25 is equal to zero, you see? Now this becomes a factorable quadratic equation Let's see, so we need two numbers that multiply to 25, same two numbers add up to negative 10. Well, let's see, u minus 5 and then u minus 5 is equal to 0. Check. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10. So these check, good. So now I just set each one to 0, so u minus 5 is 0. Well, the other one now says u minus 5 is also equal to 0. Well, from both of them, right, from both of these, you're going to get that u is 5, but the same thing over here. It's also u equals 5. So just use one of these ultimately, okay? In other words, just take, for example, I'll do it over here. Let's just use u equals 5. Now remember, u is defined as x squared minus 11. So replace u back. x squared minus 11 is equal to 5 for that reason, you see? Now you got to get x out of this process. Add 11 to both sides. So x squared would be 5 plus 11. So x squared would be equal to 16. Now take the square root on both sides. You know, I need to move this up. So take the square root on both sides. So square root of x squared to plus or minus the square root of 16. Again, on the left side here, what's going to happen? Well, this and this right here, <laughs> those will cancel off. So x will be plus or minus 4. That's it, right? Because the root of 16 is 4. So in this particular case, we have only two solutions. x is 4 and x is negative 4 or negative 4. In other words, only two solutions exist in this particular case, unlike in the other two where there were four solutions overall in each question. That is it for me, so thank you friends so much for watching. Please leave a like, please subscribe. I hope all of this is helpful. I'll see you in another video.